Tummy. Shout out to you guys, Montana Max. Uh, Lonzo, you may could have saved them from Jerry, though. Okay. Oh, huh. There's a, There's always going to be that. You've heard this before. Talk to me. So you get slack for not saving them from Jerry. I mean, everybody was grown men from what I understand, right? Well, everybody was grown men. And whatever he told them, they immediately excommunicated my ass from all, all mm -hmm. surroundings. Okay. Mm. I wasn't invited to none of the meetings. I, you know, again, again, like I said before, you got to understand right before I introduced Easy to Jerry, I had just got a record deal at CBS. Okay. I got a hundred thousand dollar record deal for Wrecking Crew for CBS. I knew Jerry then, but I didn't give Jerry, I didn't, I didn't make Jerry my manager because I didn't want to give him $20,000 for a deal that I got on my own. So he knew I had enough sense to understand what he was what he was doing. Now, yeah, I had no problem with paying him, but if you'd have got the deal, it'd have been different. I got this deal, and like I asked my lawyer, do I need a manager? He says, no, you don't need a manager for this. So all he's gonna do, I'm gonna read the contract, I'm gonna go over the contract, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, negotiate the contract with the legal affairs department at CBS. I'm gonna tell him what they said. He's gonna tell you, okay? You you want to spend twenty thousand dollars for to, for a messenger? I said no. So he said, <laughs> he says, give me pay. You, know, you got to pay me no matter what. And plus, when you get through, when you get through, you'll understand. You'll have a better understanding of the record business. His his uh, fee was seventy five hundred bucks. I saved twenty thousand dollars. I split it amongst the crew. I didn't keep it. I split it amongst the crew. Jerry understood that. I, he knew at that point I understood business. And not saying he didn't like me. He just didn't figure that. Hey, man. This guy is he's, he's he's a smart one. I don't need him around these guys. So, Damn. and as Yellow said on on the interview, said he man, you know, they didn't have nobody around them to pull their coat to get no advice. Nobody, there was nobody around it. Like I said, yeah. I, I I knew all these guys personally. I have never met their dads. So I was the only huh. I was the only go to guy they had. Cube dad yeah. was around, but nobody nobody's dad had any entertainment business but Lonzo. Mm -hmm. So once Lonzo was excommunicated, you know, it's like when you when you your girl get away from you or give it a new guy, he, he don't want you around her because he don't want you around that new guy. He gonna pump you, give her everything that she need to know about you, okay? Or she need to know about him and make himself mm. be, be the new hero. Mm. He's the new hero, okay? Mm. You don't need the old hero no more, okay? And it was it was it was a very smooth transition. It was, and then. But here, here's, a, here's the crazy part. I eventually did hire Jerry as my manager. Mm -hmm. So he had he had a kind of balance between us, okay? He had the, he had mm. the balance. So that's how me and Atrian got super cool because Jerry was more dedicated to um, to Easy E and, and um, uh, Dre them, but he still had he still wasn't totally sure that he wouldn't let us all go because we we gave him an ultimatum. Hey man. Either us or them. He said, I, I want to keep everybody contractually. I could not leave. I still had a contract. Egypt still had a contract. And um, Rudy was still signed to his partner. But everybody, it was understood as our contracts came uh, um, expired, we weren't, going to, we weren't going to be renewing. He wouldn't release us, but we, could, but we would not be renewing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so once that transpired, I, I think I was the last one to sign, so I was the last one there. So he, he he gave me the well he gave me he, he um Adrian took Adrian took over my my uh my, my duties and that's how we became so tight because um you know Adrian was a real cool dude he 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 liked Jerry a lot Jerry Jerry he wasn't a horrible dude he was a a good teacher but he also because he was a good teacher he knew what not to teach your ass too. <laughs> Mm, that's he knew what it. Not you to never, teach your ass. Yeah, the karate master never teaches you his best trick. What they tell you, I taught you everything you know, not everything I know. Exact, the Monday. Okay, I taught you everything you know, not everything I know. Okay, so with with that being the situation, that's what made him. He gave he gave up enough game to keep folks happy, but not all the game. Mm. Okay, and that makes a big difference. Yeah, damn man, that's deep as hell, man. Yeah, we got some good stuff. I mean. Montana says, I think NWA would have never broke up if they had you in their corner. They, he, he wasn't the one that left. They kicked him. They, you know, yeah. you know, let me ask, 
Go ahead. Go ahead. What? No, go ahead. No, what? Um, what was your last conversation with Jerry Heller, if you even remember it? Um, before he died. Yeah, or just even yeah, yeah. Let's say before he died. Yeah. So you guys uh, were in the communication up until he passed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. We, we, we was we would talk from time to time, and he was saying he was suing. He was suing. Uh, he asked me how did I feel about the movie. How did I feel about my portrayal? I said, man, you know, I understand it's a movie, dude. You know, I, I'm not tripping. Um, and he was like, I hate the way they did me, and I'm going to be suing. And he, uh, he was talking about suing at the time when we were talking. I guess he was trying to see if I'd be interested in possibly being a part of the lawsuit. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm not, I'm not getting in that shit because I knew for a fact um, my life was going to change one way or another because of the movie. Mm-hmm. After I saw the movie, People that saw people who saw the movie before I saw the movie. My boy Matthew McDaniels, or my my partner, said, "Lonzo, your life is going to change forever once this movie comes out." And it did. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, they made me out to be the hater, but you mm-hmm. know, for for a small fee, I will come to your cottage and prove to you I'm not the hater. Okay. <laughs> understand, man. I just understand the game. Okay. Yeah, when you get lemons, you you make lemonade, man. You don't complain because you mm-hmm. mad because you got apples. You didn't get apples. You make lemonade. If you get grape juice, nigga, make some jelly, okay? You know, and I, I got I got to say that I got to say that I'm a, I'm gonna I'm give you a perfect example, and we can go back to this in just a second. A uh, perfect example, of what I'm what I mean, is I had prostate cancer, okay, mm-hmm. a few years ago. I had prostate cancer, and I became an advocate for prostate cancer, and now I have my nonprofit, the Lyrical Revolution. The, I do events for prostate cancer. Okay, that's a lemon, man. Prostate cancer is a straight lemon. Okay, scary ass lemon. But you don't just sit there and just die from the lemon. You get rid of you do you take the best part of it and you make it work for you. Guess what? A lot of guys, a lot of brothers have prostate cancer. So as mm-hmm. I talk about prostate cancer to guys my age, because check this out. Guys right behind me, they prostate cancer material. The guys right behind me, so that's a, for, for, so for Lonzo, that's a new that's a new frontier to be a, for lack of a better word, right now, a godfather in. Now not, a lot of cats had, had had prostate cancer before me, but most cats don't talk about it. And yeah. if you if you talked about prostate cancer, less a fewer people would be dying from prostate cancer. And more cats would not be affected permanently by ca- prostate cancer that are still living. What I mean by it is, your homie stopped working. Mm-hmm. Mm. Homie stopped working. Damn. Okay. Ugh. Homie stopped working. Damn, Why? dog. Why? Because you didn't go. You didn't go to the doctor and let him do what he got Damn. to do to make sure you are right. Okay. You let him stick a stick down your throat and see your tonsils okay. You let him look in your eyes with a flashlight. But if you go to put these fingers anywhere near you, you want to fight. Okay? Or take off running. So once once you see a problem, and this has been my this has been my get down for 45 years. Okay? This has been, I'm gonna give you the key to my success. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what I did, okay, what I do, okay? I find what people need. And I give it to him. An old man told me that a long time ago. Mm-hmm. Find what people need, and they'll always need you. Mm-hmm. Do what you love for a living, and you'll never work harder day in your life. Okay? Mm-hmm. Black men need somebody to speak up for prostate cancer. Farrakhan had pr- prostate cancer. Um, uh, Charlie Wilson had prostate cancer. Um, Cornel West had prostate cancer. But they don't talk about it. If something that happened to them, if something that happened to them, they dealt with it. It's over with. They, my, they, I, I got over mine. Okay, then, 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 then wrong with that. This, if, this ain't everybody's lane. This ain't everybody's lane. But I took it upon myself to be a spokesman for prostate cancer. And I, I, I'm getting a lot of love. I, I'm gonna be on Tavis Smiley show in a couple of days. Uh, in a few days. Nice. I'm gonna be on Channel 11 in the morning on KTLA. Got the got the confirmation this morning. So all this stuff right here, and then then you combine that with being the Godfather of West Coast hip hop, it it, is, it gives you a bigger profile, man. So don't 
worry about the bad part, just take it and run with it. I mean, here people people are going to prison, coming out, man, stars. Come on, dude. I'm not saying you got to go to prison, but figure out a way to make it work for you. That's all I'm saying. Mm. There it is, Playboy. And there's a big event next month, right? Yes, sir. Is September 18th. Yeah, yeah. I sponsor, five pe- I sponsor five people myself yes, for a hundred dollars. So did. I encourage everybody out there to, you know, just do one real quick before we move on. We don't want to do a lot of, you know, you know, prostate talk for the whole show, but right, give right. them, let them know what, um, how, how they can sponsor and all that. Go to Eventbrite, um, prostate cancer, 2021 at eventbrite.com, uh, dot eventbrite.com. And you can donate. You can come out, walk with us on Saturday, September 18th from 10 to 2, 10 to, yeah, 10 to 2 p.m., um, I'm working with the city of Carson, city of Compton, Steve Bradford, the state senator is going to be in the house. Uh, I'm working with the NAACP, some Mason's going to be there. Some of everybody's going to be there. Cause this is the man, as I talk about this, the more I talk about prostate cancer, the more people I realize, man, my daddy died from that. If I'd have known mm-hmm. about that, he, he, if he didn't went to the doctor, if he didn't went to the doctor, he, we could have saved him. Okay. And that's the part for me that it pisses me off is that it don't, t- the doctor told me, this is my last statement about prostate cancer. If you want, if you got to get cancer, you want prostate cancer and you want, or you want skin cancer. Skin cancer. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? Because they're the easiest one to, to, to cure. Skin cancer, you're going to see it. Prostate cancer, you can't see it. Mm. And when by the time you get symptoms, it might be too late. Okay? It might be too late. I started going to the restroom a lot. Okay? And doctor been watching my prostate. It was enlarged. It, I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching them. I need, I need some more to do something different this right here. And that's where we found it. And that's how they would take care of it. But mm-hmm. that's the key to all this, man. That's why I'm able to sit here and talk to y'all today. Uh, a healthy ass, old ass man uh, who loves being a senior citizen. Shit, this shit ain't that bad. <laughs> you, you are the, you are the, the youngest, oldest motherfucker that I know, dude. You, sometimes you put me, sometimes you put me to shame. I'm like, shit, I think I work a lot hard. And I'm like, I see Lonzo just fucking knocking it out the park, man. But I love that shit about you.